Okay, we're here at the Five Minute Bark, and we've got an exciting new guest here today that's, well, been referred from another guest, and we're really excited to have her here today, and she's very beautiful, and she is a professional figure competitor and coach. Yes. And her name is Alyssa Parker, everybody. Say hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> thanks for having me. I know. Thanks for coming in and dealing with all this mess here with lights and cameras. Yeah, this and, is cool. It's a nice setup. Uh, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty fun. It's pretty complicated, huh? It's, yes. But, all right. So, we got you here today, and... You were referred by your, one of your clients. My clients, yeah. yes, Rebecca Barlow. Rebecca She's Barlow. She's amazing. Yeah, she is amazing. She did yeah. a great job, actually. She was on our show. Yes, it was great. I was yeah. really impressed. Yeah, <laughs> and she said so many great things about you, and you have to have this person on your show. So, Alyssa, you're uh-huh. here today, and I hope you have a lot to share. I do. A, I'm going to put plenty. a lot of pressure on you here today, like you're <laughs> on stage here today. So, tell me your story. So, I'm a professional figure competitor, like you said. I'm a mom. I have two kids at home. I started doing this whole coaching thing because I could work from home with my kids. Um, I've been competing for over 10 years. So over that time I have, I've won and I've lost and I've learned a whole lot along the way. So that's about that. What have you learned? Well, I've learned how not to do things. I've learned a better way to eat for me. I've struggled with eating disorders and how to overcome them. I've been able to coach other clients that I see falling down the same path or to get out of what they've been doing for so long because there's so many irresponsible coaches out there who won't, don't care so much. And it's right. not all about you know the winning a little plastic trophy. Right. You know? it's, it's not about that. To you, it's just to... to perfect it and right and I do it because I love it you right. know I would do it whether there was a contest or not right. you know and that's important I don't if you don't want to compete then don't compete you right. know right do what you want to do yeah okay so obviously in, in that field that you're competing in I mean it it's, takes nutrition it takes working out it takes right dedication. it's everything it's a lifestyle yeah so. a lifestyle but that's more than a lifestyle I mean when you're got to make sure your body's in fit you can watch what you're eating watch the right. times you sleep and so right. tell us a little bit about the, some of the training that you had to put yourself through or endure or enjoy right well so the parts that I did not enjoy which you know when I was trying to get my pro card there was a lot of pressure at that point and the pressure to win was very intense and I was willing to do whatever I could do to get there right so I was at that time I was doing two and a half hours of cardio every day I was, and that was broken up usually into three sessions. I was lifting weights twice a day. So I was doing, I was working out four or five hours a day at least. So that's two hours of cardio plus. Plus the weight weight training. training. And that was in two sessions. So I was working out all day. I wasn't eating enough. I was probably eating 1200 calories a day. Right. And I, I was sick and I didn't even notice how bad I felt until I was out of that Mm -hmm. you know once I was beyond that phase in my life and I started eating more and feeling better and working out less and I realized how sick I had been I mean my hormones were in the tank I was a mess right I was a total mess and it was affecting my relationship with my husband I was I mean I was a mom and how could I be a good mom when I could barely even get off the couch when I wasn't working out right you know I was too exhausted and I see a lot of girls falling down the same path you know, and, and there's coaches that say, you know, my way or the highway do this, you know, and it doesn't fit their lifestyle and they're not happy doing it. I was at that point to get my pro card because I was really goal oriented. And I think that it affects people who are really motivated. You know, when you're a highly motivated person, you will do whatever it takes. Somebody who's not as motivated won't fall down that same path. Right. Because they'll give up well before they get to a point of discomfort. So you said you, you were sick. You used the word sick. Yeah. And can you describe, because obviously we're here to help others out there that, right. that maybe are doing the same thing or just kind of not eating right to say, you know, lose weight or right. keep their body the way they want to keep it or think they should keep it. Right. Explain and that a little so many, more. So many women too, they will diet on really, really low calorie diets and you don't, you have no energy. Mm-hmm. You know, you need a certain amount of glycogen for your brain to function properly. Right. So I couldn't think straight. I felt like I was living underwater. Right. You know, I, I really literally, I did not notice it until after the fact, but I was, I did not feel good ever. I mean, it was years. I went years feeling like that. Right. And now I feel so much better. And I'm like, why would I ever, I would never do that to myself again. So I figured out a way to make it work for my lifestyle. It's a lot healthier and I don't have to do. Yes. And I found a coach that I work with who preaches this method of dieting and losing weight and, and gaining weight after your diet in a uh, appropriate way. So 
I mean, I sought out somebody who could help me in that way because I knew I needed to fix it. And I was developing binge eating disorder on top of that. And I suffered with a little bit of anorexia when I was younger. I never admitted it really. And I don't think I've really talked about it ever. Mm -hmm. But and I kind of put it under, oh, I'm just working a lot. You know, I don't have time to eat, you know, but I didn't eat. (laughs) Yeah. I want to dig into this a little deeper right Mm -hmm. here because this is really kind of what it's all about in the show here is like the breaking point from going from the realization right that you, you you realize you finally actually realized that this was wrong and it was bad and it's not helping me and my relationship and so on and so forth right. or my body for that matter what did it take what was the do you, do you know that moment do you know what I don't, is I don't it somebody really saying know. something to you i mean or you i just, i had competed last year and i didn't place that well i kind of i got to the point where nothing was working anymore Right. I was dieting, I was killing myself and my body wasn't responding like it should. Right. And I was still doing the cheat meal thing. So I was having, you know, a binge every yep. week and I lived for that meal. It became more important than my family. It yep. became more important. You know, I would, we would go to dinner and we would get in a fight over my husband taking too big of a bite right. of my food. You know, <laughs> I mean, it was like, if you come near me, I will stab you. <laughs> <laughs> so it just became, it was consuming me. Right. And I knew, you know, um, intellectually I knew that it was not healthy right and finally I I knew that if I switched to this other coach that I was gonna have that meal taken away from me (laughs) Mm. and I knew that I needed that right so I needed to get with somebody who would kind of hold my hand and force me because I I couldn't do it alone and I don't think people should feel like they have to do it alone if you need help get help it's a really big investment in your life right you know you don't you shouldn't feel pressured to have to figure it out by yourself right one of the great things I heard you say also is that you, you actually went out and found the right person for you. Right. You need to do some research. And, and a lot of research, right? Yeah. And, and Googling, you were... Right. Googling, and actually, the people. coach that I have is Lane Norton. He's a PhD in nutritional sciences. And he's kind of one of the leading people that deals with this. He deals with people that compete that have eating disorders. He, this is his bread and butter. Right. So um, I sought him out. He's very busy. He doesn't work with everybody. So I got lucky enough to be able to work with him. Yep. But he refers people to other people. I do this now. There's a lot of people now. It's becoming more popular. So it will be easier to find someone who deals with these issues. Right. Um, it. Getting on to another thing here, because this was very important to you before as well, is, is um, working out too much. Right. Well, like I was saying before, you know, when I was training for my shows, I was doing hours and hours of workouts. Well, once I hit a plateau, there was nowhere for me to go. Right. You know, I couldn't start working out more. I mean, I didn't have enough time in a day and I didn't have any energy. And I think we need to explain that more to people because they just think they have to do that. Like it's it, like it burn, no. I'm burning calories and that's that's like... One well, minus one equals zero. You know well, I mean? first of all, your your metabolism is sort of like a moving, fluctuating thing. So if you're if you're able to lose weight on a little bit of, of working out, then do that. And right. then when you hit a plateau, you have somewhere to go. Same thing with dieting. You want to be able to eat as much food as possible and it still work. Right. before so you wouldn't just go and start dropping your calories immediately a thousand calories a day or something because that, your body would lose weight fine on just a 500 calorie deficit right so you start small make little changes and then when you get stuck you have somewhere to go so that's really important and same thing with working out it works both with both working right. out and training yeah so start small don't go running a marathon every day no. you know if you don't even run at all Yep. You know, start running or do, you know, 20 minutes of cardio once a week. Yep. Well, I mean, I'm hardcore, so I, I would fit into the category of that person. that was like, okay, that's it. <clears throat> I'm giving it up my all. I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to rock this and have right. it happen fast, as fast as it can. Cause and I want then change. people burn out. Right. And, and then do. you gain weight quickly yep. after, cause you've you then now fast, slowed your metabolism fast. down. Right. Um, and the same goes with working out. It's just like, just. Right. And your, right your body out. wants to be in homeostasis. So everything you want to adapt to whatever you're doing, it's a survival mechanism. Right. So basically if you're on a weight loss plan, your body at some point is going to adapt to that caloric intake yep. because it doesn't want to keep losing weight. It wants you to, to continue living yep. Yep. <laughs> and not dwindle down to nothing. Yes. So it just makes sense. So then when you come off of a diet, so say you're done dieting, well, you can't go back to eating your normal rate because your maintenance calories is lower now. Right. So you have to slowly go back into that, which is the concept of reverse dieting. So 
once you go on a diet, then you slowly increase your intake, you know, little by little each week. And it's a slow process. You have to be patient. Yep. You want to lose weight slow and you want to gain weight slow. So you're reintroducing certain foods back into your diet. Slow. Not even certain foods. I've that flexible eating is being able to eat whatever you want, essentially. Right. Yeah. I mean, it gets a bad rap. It's it's seen under the name of IIFYM, which is it, if it fits your macros, or flexible dieting, flexible eating. And basically, you have to hit macronutrient targets. So you have to eat a certain amount of protein, carbs, and fats per day, and fiber. Right. So people you know, will say, oh, you can eat all this junk food. No, you really can't. Because right. if you're on a low-calorie uh, plan, then you still have to eat a certain amount of fiber and that is vegetables and healthy lean proteins and stuff like that. So you're still eating healthy food, but if you go to a party and have a piece of pizza, well then the rest of the day, you just adjust your macros so that you have, you know, you fit for the whole day. You're okay. So and you, it and just, you said there's a couple apps out there that could help these people, right? Yeah, there's um, my work or my macros and uh, my fitness pal. I use that one. That one was yeah. really, that's really good. Yeah, and there's several. If you go just Google, you know, um, macros on or not Google, but iTunes, or iTunes. the App Store or whatever. <laughs> app store. Yeah, the App Store and look for it. And there's several, and you may want to try a few and see because you'll once you start entering your own foods in, then you're kind of sucked in yeah. to one. Well, I like the I might my, my, the I like the My Fitness Pal one because one you, actually a lot of the times you can just uh, scan. Yeah, scan the, the one I the use. One, I scan. Yeah, it scans in. So, and I end, end up eating a lot of the same foods when I was yeah. hardcore, and, and so it just repeat them, repeat them. So it wasn't really a hassle. Right. It's pretty easy. And once you get in the habit of doing it, it's kind of hard to start. But once you get in the habit, it's definitely not hard. I keep, uh, I have a scale in my kitchen. I have like my measuring thing. So I measure everything, but I can eat what I want to eat. So I never feel deprived. Right. You know? And so we both agree that it's definitely worth using the the MyFitnessPal or whatever app you want to choose because it it just helps you do that counting that you're not going to count you're not going to do that counting in your head perfectly every day. And no, it, no. And it helps you learn what the appropriate portion sizes are, especially if you have never done this before ever. I mean, I can now go, I can go out to eat. I can go to a restaurant and I know kind of, okay, well, that's about four ounces of fish yeah. and about six ounces of asparagus or whatever I'm ordering and about, I can estimate and I'm usually pretty close. Yep. So it, at a, eventually at some point you can start eating intuitively and you won't have to write everything down, but you'll be able to maintain your weight and you can sort of know instinctively how, how much you should be eating. And you start knowing more cues about your hunger, you know, and satiety. Okay, well, this is what I normally eat for lunch and I feel super full and I was at a restaurant. So maybe the fat intake was a little higher than I thought because I'm really full. Right. So this just helps you really get to know your body and how to eat properly. Yeah. I, I know it worked really, really well for me, and I was really excited about it. But another thing you said you wanted to touch on, I think that would be really helpful for everybody out there, if you don't mind sharing about mm-hmm. it, is um, reading reading the ingredients on Oh, yeah, labels. reading a food label. Reading I mean, most label. you learn this through tracking your macros because you'll be looking at labels all the time. But, you know, there's a lot of hidden calories that people don't know about on things like gum. You know, gum has calories. People don't count it. You know, if you have 10 pieces a day, that's like 40, 50 calories. So you just have to be mindful of hidden things that you don't know, like um, spray butter for one or Pam, you know, it's a second spray is the portion size. So if it's below uh, one gram, they can put zero. So if you're going and spraying for a long time, well, you probably just added at least a teaspoon of fat, which is five grams of fat and 40, 40 calories. So just little things to be mindful of when you're Mm -hmm. reading a nutrition label and the portion size is listed on the label so you know you have to make sure that you're eating the right portion size a lot of people out there get to drinking cokes and sodas and so on and so forth is there i mean we're drinking a diet coke versus a regular coke is i heard diets almost worse than regular no is that true what's no because there's tons of sugar and calories in a regular soda okay you know i wouldn't say what about the aspartame in the uh, diet? Well, aspartame has been studied for so many years and it is safe. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I wouldn't get hung up on those things. Okay. I, I eat what I want to eat. I mean, I'm asking the expert here. Yeah. So. No, I eat what I want to eat. And yeah. I don't, I, I mean, for me, if I go to a restaurant and everybody's drinking cocktails and stuff, you know, I'm going to order a Diet Coke because it makes me feel like I'm having something, right. you know? So for me, it gets me through. I think whatever is important to you as an individual should be what, and you can sustain it for the rest of your life. Right. Then do that. 
You know, if you want to avoid anything artificial, then do that. If right. that's an important thing for you and that you can really maintain. Right. Because the, the whole thing is not to be deprived. Yeah. Once you start feeling deprived, then you start getting into, you know, where you're binging and going out. If that's something you really want, then you need to find a way to fit it into your diet. And I happen to really like diet soda. <laughs> so I fit I it in. It. I try to like it, but I end up, you know, I... I I buy these mini Pepsis now. I, I just have to have like two sips and I'm done. I can't drink a whole drink anymore, right. which is good. Yeah. But I just have to have that fix, I guess. And, and uh, it, it goes away quickly because I, I can feel the sugar now more than ever before, right. especially after I've changed my diet quite a bit. Oh, yeah. If I have a real like sugary drink, I can tell instantly because <laughs> I don't even like that anymore. Yeah. I used to, when I was a kid, I mean, I ate, I'm a foodie. Yeah. So I really like food. A lot of people always say to me, oh, I could never do what you do because I like food way too much. Trust me. You don't like it more than me. <laughs> I am <laughs> obsessed. I wrote a cookbook. Right. So, you there know, you I really, I really am into food totally. So, I mean, I'm able to manage a healthy lifestyle and diet and a healthy weight. And I still get to eat food that I like. You touched on earlier um, how you had struggles with um, eating disorder. Mm -hmm. And it's something you really, really have never talked about before. Right. Is there anything you want to share with people to maybe help them realize that you just realize something to help them help them with it. Because obviously it's a major, major issue. As you right. explained to me before this thing started, it's one of the biggest diseases out there. Right. Is there anything that you can teach people that, you, sh you know, it's okay. Everything's right. okay. Like no, your body I think people, size or, people feel like they're alone, you know, that they're the only ones going through something. And you're not. We're all going through the same stuff. Everybody, right. you're not very unique, really, yeah. in that way. <laughs> so we all suffer. And even, like, you look in the fitness magazines and you see images of women that are perfect. And you think, oh, they have it all together. Yeah. They don't. Right. You know, most often they have more problems than everybody else. And they're sick. And they have an eating disorder. Right. So you can't look to outside sources and think that you're, you don't hold up. You know, I had, a, had somebody say to me, you know, that they have me on their refrigerator is what they want to look like as the ideal. And I'm like, Oh, I wish I looked like that too, <laughs> you know, because it's not real, you right. know, it's, it's something that is an image that is trying to sell something usually. And it's just not, it's usually photoshopped or airbrushed. It's just not a, it's not reality. Right. right. And social media, I think plays a big role in this and making it worse because you, people only post the good stuff. You know, every, life is so great. And then it makes you feel like, oh, well, I don't, I'm not doing that great. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, I just want people to know that, you know, even somebody who looks like they have it all together doesn't always. So like I think even, that helps. Even being in fitness shape is actually probably not too healthy because you're so lean. Yeah, it's extreme. It's extreme. Competing is, is extreme and it's not really a place that you would stay. You know, you, yeah. you do this competition and then right after, you know, you kind of slowly work your way back up to a normal weight. Right. You know, and I, I mean... I'll lose usually up to 20 pounds. So it's a big difference in right. how you look. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. Thank you for sharing about that. That's uh, very, very important. And there's some things that you had a lot of knowledge about and you wanted to talk about here today is, is did we talk about flexible dieting yet? Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. So it's basically you can eat what you want to eat. You just have to fit it within a certain amount of uh, calories coming from uh, certain macronutrients, protein, right. carbs, fats, and fiber. So uh, protein has four grams of, uh, four grams of cal or yeah, protein is four calories per gram. Carbs are four calories per gram. Fat is nine calories per gram and fiber is two calories per gram. And alcohol is seven. Know. Alcohol is seven calories per gram. So it's like almost as expensive as fat when you consume it in your diet. So I want to go put some weight on. I just have a couple of drinks. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would be one way to do it. But I mean, and, and that's the thing with a flexible diet. If I want to have a glass of wine with dinner, fine. I just put it in there and I track it. Yeah. So it counts towards carbs and fats. But basically, you know, so if you go online and you are saying, OK, I want to figure out how much I should eat. So you go online and you do a calculator, calculate your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate. So you go in there and, and for me, mine is around 1400. Okay. Well, when I was competing, I was eating 1200 calories a day. Plus I was burning probably a thousand at least, and I wasn't losing any weight. Right. So that was not accurate. So we have to f take into consideration other factors besides what you would put into a traditional calculator online. So your age, your activity level, your dieting history plays a big role. I was dieting for so many years. I've been competing 10 years. I was dieting at that time about seven years. 
So my metabolism now at that point was kind of in the tank. So if you realize that your maintenance calories, so initially to start, I would track your track, what you're eating for a few weeks. Don't change anything, figure out what your maintenance is. And if you're main, if you're maintaining your weight, uh, gaining weight or losing weight on that, uh, caloric intake. So figure that out first, then take that number and you can move from there. So within that number, you want to figure out how much protein that you consume, which is basically your body weight times 0.8 or 0.1 depend if you're active. Right. So then you have your protein and then from there the remaining calories come from carbs and fats. And that's how you figure it out. So it's pretty it's actually pretty easy. easy. So if you want to lose weight, you could subtract 500 calories coming from carbs and fats. Your protein intake you would want to keep about the yes, same. Yes. So you can subtract 500 calories and then if you get stuck, you can take maybe 5 grams of carbs out or a gram of fat each week or maybe bump up your cardio. Uh, do like high intensity, high intensity interval training and maybe add an interval. Right. So you're making small adjustments and you may all of a sudden lose weight on just a tiny adjustment. You don't need to go and make, you know, a huge change right out of the gate. Yeah. So start small. And then if, when, if say you wanted to gain weight, say you finished a diet, your maintenance calories may be lower at this point because your metabolism might have slowed. So you do the exact same thing. Slowly add cal- calories from carbs and fats each week. And until you get to a point where you're eating a lot more and maintaining your weight. So it's pretty simple. You just have to kind of figure out a plan to do it. And I have all that in my book that I will hopefully have out in the next year. Awesome. And we'll talk about that, but I want to elaborate on what you're saying here. Mm -hmm. I just watched this YouTube video on, on Olympic teams. And one of the guys, one of the coaches, it it just kind of realized this, this formula of if I can improve my team in 1% on every area, Mm -hmm. their sleep, their food, their, the way they walk, the way they do things. They just did this macro, like you talked about, about improving in each area by 1%. And they end up being like the winners in the Olympics by tenfold because this small increase. Right, across you know, the board. Instead of trying to everybody. do dramatic. Yeah. yeah. It was just amazing. And, and, and more and more we're finding out that, you know, it's, it's the little in, improvements that, right. that, that make the big Well, and you have to consider, I mean, this is your life, you know, you may be training to win a contest or maybe you want to lose 10 pounds to go to Cabo, but it's really (laughs) your life. So you need to. It's so funny you say that because (laughs) that's literally what you hear a woman say a lot of times is like, I got to lose 10 weight to 10 pounds to go to Palm Springs. And then I'm going to eat the whole time and drink (laughs) and you gain 10 pounds on your vacation. So you have to. It doesn't make any sense. No, it's silly. But it's a girl thing. You don't get it. (laughs) I don't. I am not going to get that. But Mm -hmm. basically, you know, your happiness is really important. You know, I enjoy eating food. I like going to restaurants. I like spending time with my family and going on vacation and not feeling like, oh, gosh, I've got to pack all my food. I really hardly ever food prep. I mean, I make dinner. I cook a lot of my own food, but I don't cook it all for the week and then portion it out. I, I do sometimes if I'm traveling and I know I won't have access to stuff. But for the most part, you know, I buy healthy food and then I eat as I go through the day. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, well, I got this much left. So this is what my last meal will be. And I basically cook dinner and then I have the leftovers for lunch. I mean, it's easy. It's not it's nothing hard and you don't have to overthink it. And you have to remember, you know, are you doing this because you love it? And are you happy? Because mental happiness is a huge plays a huge role. If you're miserable that's going to age you and affect you more yes, than way more, way than more. totally than eating a little bit of extra calories or having a glass of wine. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to admit when I, when I tried to do, when I well, actually not tried, I, I did do this. Um, I lost 20 pounds for one of my podcasts mm-hmm. to see what it could do. And I was like, there's, there's no way I'm going to be able to eat every two hours. This is crazy. Right. Like, and you don't I, have to, but I, I did it. And when I learned how to do it, it was, it was awesome. I'm like, the whole thing is, is at first I thought like, this is impossible. Like I can't do this because I'm so, you know, oh my God, I'm going to starve. Oh my God, this. But the, really what I found out is like, you can find these great bars that are protein bars or whatever you can do supplementally, supplementally in between your right. other meals just right. to keep, keep things and going. And actually, I mean, you don't want to eat more than four to five meals a day. Right. So really, I think I was doing for, like five or six. Yeah. For protein synthesis to either maintain or build new muscle. You need to eat about uh, every four hours or so is the like minimum mm-hmm. because otherwise your 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 protein synthesis the rate of protein synthesis is dulled. So you really want your protein more in a bolus. So you know you see hear about these people oh I got to eat every two hours or you know eight meals or whatever and you you're really better off 
having about like three to four meals and having a bigger portion of protein, like 20 to 30 grams at a sitting. So awesome. <laughs> I want to, I want to talk about your books. Um, kudos to you for doing that. I mean, uh, I, I, I've, I wrote a book and I, it's so hard. Yeah. It, it was a lot of work. Yeah, I focused like, on that. Yeah. A lot, lot of work. And, um, you want to tell us about them? Yeah. So I have, I have, well, I have three total. Oh, I three. have two posing books. So I do a lot of posing coaching and this is, the books are basically everything I tell my clients leading up to a show. So it's really inexpensive considering, you know, for private posing sessions, it's, it's quite a bit more. So you get all of the information. It's everything you need to know to get on stage aside from diet and training. But I've had 10 years competing and I've learned a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes and you know, basically there's, it goes, it covers everything from suit selection, makeup, tanning, hair, what the judges are looking for, what to do after the show, finding a coach that does the reverse diet for you. Um, also like the feelings that you have after it's kind of, some people have like a depression because yeah. it's like having a baby. It's like a postpartum depression. you sort of are like, what do I do now? So it just helps guide people through the whole process. So it's really more than just a posing book, but it does, it, extensively goes over the posing the important for parts. each show. The yeah. actual important parts. So it, but it's stuff that coaches don't always know. You know, some of them aren't competitors. Some of them don't compete. A lot of people get trainers who are just trainers, you know, and they send these girls off and they have no clue what they're doing. So if you can't present yourself on stage appropriately, what good is all that training and tidying you just did? Yeah. So yeah. those are on my website. I have those available now um, as a PDF. So it's their eBooks. And then I've written a cookbook and a diet like guide. So it kind of explains everything that we talked, talked about. about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So how to how to figure out your dieting. It talks about struggling and failing and um, everything kind of that I went through mm -hmm. in order to get to this point. So. I have all the recipes in there. It's a cookbook. So I have um, everything, you know, that I do for entertaining and for, you know, all my meals and desserts and yeah. drinks and everything. So it's all very low carb and low fat because, you, you know, I can even eat it when I'm dieting for a show. It's all, you know, really easy, simple stuff. But then you can always add more protein or more carbs and fats if you need to. Right. So those are really easy because those taste good. What a great place we live in where people like you take your experience and write it down for all of us out here to learn from because you know reinventing wheels <laughs> it's no fun no it's a lot of work. it was and, years of work <laughs> yeah and, and i and i appreciate that and i'm sure the audience will appreciate that and whoever's interested in the books you have of course that that they're going to save hours and hours of time and headache right and, and, and mistakes. my 10 years of experience you know they can have reading it in a few hours yeah i mean you know does it doesn't it suck though because like i know i, I wish i had that <laughs> like i was in the beginning of my sport we had to learn we had to fall on our heads to figure things out now they have like you know places they can crash on it doesn't even hurt right, and helmets right. and different things like that you and i have to go through the the, the, the trenches to get all this stuff figured out for all right. these people but at least we're, we're passing it on and that's great that you're doing that yeah right? i really i want especially for people who compete you know people really go through a lot and i don't want people to suffer like i suffered for right. so long you know there's definitely other ways to do it and a lot healthier and safer ways i mean i know i've heard so many horror stories if you just look up online you can find it um it's really prevalent so even and, and even for the mainstream person who wants to lose weight because you know i struggle too you yeah. know and this is my job yeah. so it's never easy but if you can figure out a way that makes it easier and yeah. something that you can do forever and not ever feel deprived i mean it's like that's like uh you know magic mm -hmm. <laughs> one one more thing i wanted to point out that i commend you on because you know being a competitor, you get you get so knee deep in it, you are focused on it, and so on and so forth. But you, you you end up realizing that family is important too, right? And a lot of us kind of put our jobs in front of our family, put put everything in front of our family, and 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 then you realize you have nothing, right? And you you understood that pretty quickly, and that's something yeah. that's that's worth well, talking especially about. in the bodybuilding world. I mean, you know, even if you're the best one ever, you know, you're not going to go down in the bodybuilding hall of fame because right. there isn't one. <laughs> You know, not yet. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it, and it's not, you know, a lucrative business. It's, you have to just do it because you love, love it. it. Yeah. yeah. So I think that should be that way with any job. You right. know, if you don't really love what you're doing, you only have one life. Yeah. You know, find something that you really enjoy doing yeah. and then make that your job. Your family will be there forever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, but you know, you can't forget, put them by the wayside either. Yeah. You know, you have to yeah. make time. Yeah. And they have to appreciate you putting your, your time into it as well. Which, right. Which makes an equal family. So that's great. Right. Awesome. Um, any last uh, words you want to share with the audience before we go? Do you want to 
share your website or oh, any, yeah. anything about your training and where they can, they can find you or? Um, well, my website is probably the best place to find me because that has links to all of my other social media. So okay. my website is www.alissaparker.net. And on there, I have my Instagram, which is Alyssa Parker IFBB. And my Facebook, every, all the links are on there. So for my Twitter and all that stuff. So that would be the best place. I can't believe you just said WWW. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to say that anymore. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I am at WWW. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my, my radio podcast etiquette down yeah, yet. I know, so. right? <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just teasing you there. But um, awesome. So please consider checking out that website here, everybody, and uh, help Alyssa make her dream come true and come check out her, her books and all her great information. She printed all this stuff out for me to read, and I'm going to certainly get a chance to read that later on tonight when I'm relaxing and uh, learn more about this stuff because I'm always wanting to learn more. And that's yeah. awesome. It's and good to, you know, do your research. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely worth it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to know more about dieting and anything. In this it's world. a good life skill. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So thank you so much for coming on the oh, show. Thank and you for having me. I told you it would go by fast. Yes, yeah, so it was easy. At, we're already at 30 cake. minutes, huh? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> wow. You just spent 30 minutes with me. Wow. Yeah, so oh, much that fun. That did go fast. Yeah. So hopefully maybe we'll have her come on again and do some more uh, teaching for all this incredible stuff she knows because... God, it went by so fast here today. Again, my name is Dennis Langley with the 5-Minute Bark. Again, thank you all of you listeners for uh, enjoying our time here with Alyssa Parker. She had great things to share here today, and I'm so glad you came on. And thank you so much. And oh, thank, thank you, you, everybody. And we'll talk soon. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>